mom loved my dad. I, right. I mean, even though oh, she I said know. she said it like that, she loved my dad. Yeah, they weren't together for how many years before? What? When they got uh, separated? How long were they together? Before, yeah. Oh gosh, I don't even know. Um, she was. They got together at sixteen, and I think she was forty three. Yeah, yeah, forty three. And when... she still. I remember her being really sad after for a long time and always thinking i was wishing they would get back together and not understanding why they weren't but i understood more once i got older and why they couldn't be together but it took a while well when he got on the meth he went nuts so and i never saw that side of him right and what but i guess this is the i guess back to like the alcohol so he was breaking up the house and he was drinking a lot Mm -hmm. well then um, there was always beer in the fridge and then there was whiskey sours and he just got meaner with the whiskey and then he finally started um, taking meth. And the crazy part of it is, is I preferred it. Although when I first heard he was doing it, my mom told me I was 13. Right. And, I, and I was terrified of drugs. You know, I had some people come to my school and really put the fear of God oh, yeah. into me. And I was glad for them. But I was terrified when my mom told me that my dad was, my dad was using, but we couldn't tell anybody. Right. Or the police would come to arrest him. So I was really afraid. But... Um, I guess another story, um, at the time that happened is I spoke with a friend of mine, her name was Joyce and we were just kids and I told her about my dad, um, using meth or I think back then we called it, they called it speed or I heard my dad call it crank. I mean, there were various things, but I mentioned it to my friend and she said her parents used too. Um, which I was like, wow, you know, so then I went to stay the night at their house and the mom like pulled me aside and told me that they use, um, you know, they use speed too. And that Joyce had told her and not to worry. And that my, my, the police weren't going to come and take my dad away, but don't tell anybody. And it was reassuring, but it was also really strange to me. Now that you know what you know, I mean, being an adult, like that wasn't really appropriate. I think that she was trying to help and it did help. So yeah, it's not really appropriate, but But she was an addict herself. She was an addict trying to help me understand and not have the fear um, that uh, also her daughter told a child would have that she was also on it too. And she didn't want you to say anything. Oh, could, could be. I think she did say for me not to tell anybody. And I didn't, I don't even know if I told my mom. I don't think I did. No, I think I did because I was never allowed back there. So I might've told my mom. I remember not being allowed, I think, not being allowed back there. Well, it's just, that's how it is when you're a parent, I guess, you know. Sometimes you think you can protect your kids from what's going on in your own home, but not from what's going on in other homes. Right. What was the, going on in your home? Well, that's the sad part, right? You you can't. What was going on in my home? Um, well. Especially with, the, like, your mom and your dad and how their relationship and how volatile it could be at times. Yeah, it just, it. With the, with the meth use, it got better for a little while um, because there wasn't the nightly explosions from the alcohol. But then when he started um, coming down, I learned that word. Like you learn new words when somebody's on drugs. And I learned the word coming down, which basically meant that he was going to, you know, when he was didn't coming have... off of the drugs. Yeah, when he didn't have the drugs, he was coming off the drugs, that he would be very violent and right. unpredictable. Um, so it was every bit as scary as the alcohol. Um and sometimes even more so because he would just flip out. He could be laughing one minute and angry the next. I mean, one time I got a bad beating because um, he was being joking and came in my room and I had just hung up on my boyfriend at the time. I was 17 and I was really mad and I always like had a small waist so the pants didn't fit me right. So I was always like had a gap in the back because I had big hip, big hips, you know. So he poured water down the back of my pants. My dad wow. did. And he was laughing about it. And I turned around thinking it was Rude like. Rude and inappropriate. Of, yeah, I was thinking it was like one of my siblings. So I turn around and I was like, I'm going to kick your, a, the A word. Mm-hmm. And then um, he's like, oh, really? And I was like, oh, no. You know, then when I seen I was like in trouble. And so he grabbed me and like threw me on the bed. He punched me in the face. Um my mom had to come run in and jump on his back and start hitting him to get him off of me. So that was one of the times when I was 17. And there was other times when I was just like, we would get in trouble for various things. Like, um, when he was coming down, he wouldn't want to work. And sometimes he would start a job and then not finish it because he would use the money for drugs and then run out of drugs, like the first paycheck. And then he'd run out of drugs and money. And so he couldn't go back to work. So one guy kept calling and calling. So he told us not to answer the phone. 
Well, my sister Tammy, she always like got lots of phone calls. So she answered the phone and I don't know, I think she just really didn't know. She didn't get the memo or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he ripped the phone cord out of the wall and beat us all with it. So that was like a whip, a whipping because it was like, you know, and he was huge. So it was really scary. Another time he like beat me with a hanger, a wire hanger, like, you know, in mommy dearest. (laughs) I know you don't probably know what I'm talking about, but mommy dearest didn't like wire hangers. So she beat Christine, her daughter with it. I watched mommy dearest with my siblings and I kept going like, what's so bad about mommy dearest? Like I couldn't figure it out. So she yells a lot. So she one time beat her with a hanger. So she made her go swimming and she had to, you know, hold her breath for a little while. That's nothing compared to what my dad was like. Right. nothing so i was like i don't get this my dad would humiliate me sometimes in front of my friends like just go nuts you know right so i mean it's it it's, didn't your your parents spank your well beat the crap out of your friends too one time and i had literally bought i had literally blocked that out but i did, did have a friend who her family was really dysfunctional i mean really badly dysfunctional and they did tell my parents that they could spank her And one time she stayed the night and my mom was gone and my dad, he literally, we were playing in the bathtub, I remember, and we were splashing and splashing. We were like 12 or 13 and we got water everywhere. And he literally banged on the door, yanked us out and spanked us while we were still wet. Yeah. And naked, I think. And we were 13. So, but I blocked it and she brought it up to me um, a few years ago and I was like, oh my God, he did that. Yeah. Like, what the heck? You know what I mean? It's just like one of those things that you just kind of, you kind of block out of your memory. You don't want to remember that. Right. You know, but the worst time, that wasn't even the worst time though. The worst time was when my sister and I were fighting and, and he lost it and he chased us down the hallway with a hanger, you know, and I had someone tell me like, I would have never ran for my mom, you know, like no way she'd have beat me worse. And I'm like, he's going to beat me bad regardless. And when you're terrified, right. you're going to run, you know, right. we knew he was coming. We tried to get away and get to the room quickly, but yeah, he really beat the crap out of me that night. And then I ran away and I kind of, um, hid at a park in a ditch, but then I would hear them like calling for me, my mom, my dad, my sisters, but I waited until I heard my brother, um, Jody calling for me and, then I knew it was safe to come home because Jody always protected us. Yeah. And that's in the long run what ended up happening with my mom and dad was, um, you know, slowly the meth was making everyone crazy. Like all my uncles were losing it. I had an uncle that um, stabbed our dog because our dog Cujo, <laughs> um, he could be kind of mean and he didn't like my uncle. So he would growl at him. And then one night my uncle, like, I guess he, he didn't have any drugs. So he snorted a line of Tide detergent. And Sounds like the kids in the Tide Pods nowadays. I don't know, but he went nuts. I mean, this was in the 80s. And then he came to our house and stabbed our dog in the backyard and then took off running down the street. My dad had to tackle him and hold him down. Um, Isn't and, there a story about that dog and him later on? So, yeah. So then later on in life, when my parents separated, um, the, dog, the dog lived. Yeah, the dog, the dog lived. And later on, when my parents separated and my mom, uh, my brother took my mom out of the uh, state um, uh, that same uncle took that dog in and yeah, and took care of him until he died. And the dog loved my uncle. It's uh, yeah, it's strange. My, that uncle was a very loving man. It's just was, he lost, he him. had an episode. Well, he's had, he had a psychotic break right. from snorting tide. Yeah. And then I had another uncle who, um, had a break and, you know, left his wife and came to stay with us cause he, he freaked out at her house. And then of course he didn't get any better at our house and he set our living room on fire and he thought the devil was, you know, and it were, was there and he was just yeah he lost it so I remember one time my mom just saying to my dad my dad's name was Dick and she said Dickie what are we gonna do when you lose it who's gonna hold you down who's gonna chase you around you're, you're too big yeah and I remember feeling like oh my god that's so like foreshadowing or prophetic that's gonna happen I knew it was gonna happen yeah and so by the time that I was you know grown like I guess you could say grown. I was 19. I moved out, you know, married your dad. And um, my mom was at that point, you know, like 90 pounds taking sleeping pills to go to sleep because he was apparently like accusing her. Like he would do it one behind our backs. And so she would sleep in a room. She would just stay in the room all day in the dark. And then he would come in and harass her. He took the phone bills because she saved phone bills and he took them and he would go through them and think that there was like a code in the phone bills and he mm-hmm. could dissect it and it was the <laughs> dumbest code one was a two was b <laughs> was oh like, my god 
<laughs> yeah. And, but he thought that my mom was cheating on him and she had a boyfriend. And then he thought that the video store was a um, front for prostitution. And my mom and my aunt were prostitutes. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. He like um, drilled a hole in the garage door and was looking out for the narcs. And I mean, <laughs> really just like lost it. And um, it just got really bad to the point where like they were fighting and he choked her. And he almost killed her. And the police Didn't took, he sit on her too? He was sitting on top of her, choking her. Mm-hmm. And the police, like, uh, my, because he, he thought that she was flirting with his brother. And that was the thing. It was always like these really outlandish things he would say. He was a jealous person and he would just, he was insecure. So yeah. he would say like the most outlandish things because my mom wouldn't even wear makeup, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, she There's was never just a picture of her kind of a tomboy. With makeup. No, she was kind of a tomboy. She would never wear makeup, never pay attention to guys. Never. She doesn't know how to flirt. She wasn't a flirt. Like, nothing like that. She just took care of us kids. Right. You know, but if a lot of times when he was drunk, that's what she got accused of because his Even in her older were, years, she never even met another guy. I mean, she did. She did. No, for, she did. She did, but they didn't last very long they didn't get married i don't know well in the end my mom had the mentality of like i'm never gonna let another man control me like that right and i did i did love the one that she was with for a while i think it was dave dave was a nice man Yeah. yeah yeah he was a nice man um but at any rate so all that to say is eventually my dad choked her and almost killed her and my brother um moved her to um i think well she went out to kansas where her parents were for a little while but then my dad followed But not her. her dad her stepdad? Her stepdad. Yeah, her stepdad and her mom. And then my dad followed her. And then she felt really bad and it scared her her stepdad and her mom. And so she went with my dad. She got in the car and drove all the way back to California. I think this is after he choked her. And then he started in again and again and again. And I was just like praying like that God would take her out of that situation and she'd get away. And my uncles had just moved to Arizona, Parker. And my brother was very close with my uncles. And so he decided to take my mom to Parker. And one night they came to my house in the middle of the night and it was like, we were so codependent that we were all there. Like my brother, my sisters came over, everybody. I mean, not that that's codependent. You're saying goodbye to your mom, but I mean, that's just how it was. Anytime anything happened, we would get a call like anytime dad, dad did this one time. He, um, uh, you were a baby and I was out at my house and I got a call that dad had beat up mom and I went over there, you know, we didn't live far. And then all of us were there, you know, everybody came from their houses and Jody lived there and Jody's ribs were broke. He broke Jody's ribs. Oh wow. Yeah. He beat, he tried to beat up my mom. He broke Jody's ribs and my mom went and hid in the same park where I hid. She had her house robe on. She was covered in mud. The cops were walking down the steps when I came up and I yelled at the cops and they said like, aren't you going to take him to jail? And they were like, no, um, we can't. And I said, but he broke my brother's ribs. Like he punched my brother. He hurt my brother. And they were like, they have to press charges. Oh yeah. And then that's always, yep. That's still. Yeah. So then when I came in, there was my dad. I think he was like by the stove doing something. And my mom had mud on her robe. My brother looked like he'd been crying. And there was my dad saying, you know, that effing cop, he wanted to really take me to jail. He really wanted to take me to jail, blah, blah, blah. And I smarted off. You know, he would beat me and stuff, but sometimes I would just lose it. I mean, it's like when somebody's abused by a spouse, people don't want to believe that that spouse is going to talk back or get angry. Oh, yeah. I used to do it all the time with Jeremy. You still do. It's like that show we watched recently, Killer Sally on Netflix. You know, people are like, oh, well, you know, she doesn't seem battered. Well, what does the battered person really look like? Right. right? Like we're normal people too. We get, we, we, sometimes we get abused and then we still come back because even, you know, even if the person hurts you, you push it sometimes because you just had it. Like you're still a human being. You still have emotions and anger. Yeah. Right. So I told my dad that night, you know, he should have took you to jail. You know, mm-hmm. and I just remember feeling like, God, he's just like rules this house and he's just like this king on his throne doing whatever the heck he wants. Like right. I was so over it and I was so traumatized and broken and I didn't even realize how bad off I was at the time from all the abuse and right. from all that I'd been through. And at this time you're... I'm 20. Okay. You were a baby. And then so not long after that is when he choked her she went to kansas and then she came back and then my brother came over to my house in the middle of the night and you know i remember them all being at my house and my mom crying and my sisters crying and i couldn't cry because all i could think was like thank you god that she's not gonna die yeah finally she's gonna be safe we don't have to worry about her anymore right you know and 
that that was my main thing. So then she moved out to Parker, Arizona with my brother, but it really took its toll on our whole family because 